past makes us curious. We wonder about life then. What was it like? Were people like us? Were they curious too, and did they wonder about the world around them? We're interested in the people of the past because they are our ancestors, and we sense that they must have been like us. Humans use trial and error in order to understand. Humans experiment. In Land of Legends in Lyra, we do exactly the same thing. We examine and try to understand the people of the past and the conditions in which they lived. The people of the past were always changing the world about them by taking up new opportunities and making technological progress. And we are constantly changing the way we understand their world. We are continually rediscovering the past in our own ways, for we can never arrive at the absolute truth about the past. For most of the hundred thousand years in which we humans have been producing tools, the most important raw material was flint. So research into flint implements and experiments carried out into their use and manufacture are the key to help us to understand many aspects of the way people lived in the past. Flint napping is a craft that became extinct and now has to be rediscovered. In Land of Legends in Lyre, Many researchers from home and abroad have taken part in these experiments. One American researcher has devoted most of his life to trying to become just as good as the craftsmen of ancient times. And one thing he does is to reproduce the beautiful flint daggers familiar from the end of the Stone Age and the beginning of the Bronze Age. It wasn't until I came over to Denmark and looked at the originals rather than just pictures in a book that I turn them over and see three-dimensionally just how complicated they were and, and beautiful. And uh, the more I did, the more complicated they seemed to be. So 25 years later, I occasionally come close, but I don't know that I'm even good enough to fit into a Neolithic society if I were there. Flint napping is a very complicated craft. The large flint block, the core, is attacked systematically. Every strike is carefully planned and thought through, like a chess player planning his next move. You can hit the block directly with another, harder stone, or hit it indirectly. Then the strike is transmitted through a short point made of antler. We should admire the craftsmen of ancient times. It takes years of practice for a modern craftsman before he can nap flint as well as they did. If you want to investigate methods of craftsmanship, for example, you need to be good enough to know what was possible at the time. A few of our modern researchers and flint nappers have become specialists and experts, just like the flint masters of ancient times. This large blade core is now ready to give blades. Let's look at it. It has a large platform. It's organized with two front crests and a back crest. The flint napping session is part of the series of experiments that will show how blades up to 30 to 40 centimetres long could be produced in the Neolithic age. Just like the flint daggers, they are among the very finest examples of flint craftsmanship. So the documentation consists in uh, taking notes and describing these different series using a data sheet system for each of one and also using Macro photos. A researcher has to be good enough at his craft if he's to ask the right questions about other ways the blades could have been made. Might there have been a Stone Age machine, for example, capable of transferring and increasing the force with which the central strike point in the core was hit? There's no reason to believe that people living in the Stone Age did not have experience with laws of physics such as the transmission of force. We observe the results of fantastic craftsmanship, the working processes of which we've only gradually begun to rediscover. Oh, this is a good blade. Working with experimental tools creates signs of usage called wear traces.